uh, that goes that that people will use uh, intra their own uh, companies as well as outside. So we position ourselves by bringing the people together through this type of uh, technologies. And of course your company has benefited from the uh, expansion of the internet thanks to uh, uh, its routers and switches that it sells for the uh, to direct web traffic. Now in February Cisco talked about eliminating 2,000 jobs uh, noting that this was about 3% of the company's workforce. A company which claimed it has the right playbook for the recession. What makes you think that you can avoid the big layoffs we're seeing uh, with uh, so many of your competitors? Well, it is a strategic uh, decision that we have taken, which is to reduce all our expenses, operating expenses, to ensure that we can, on one hand, go and continue generating cash, as we did in our third quarter, as well as continuing to innovate. So the action we have taken is clearly to cut travels. We have been able, on an annual basis, to reduce our travel uh, budget from $750 million to $250 million by using technologies such as telepresence. This is one example among many others, which allows us on an annual basis to reduce our expenses for about $1.5 billion. Telepresence, could you explain to us what exactly it means? People know what video conference is, but what is telepresence and how did this new technology allowed you to uh, reduce your costs significantly, especially, especially as you said, concerning travel expenses. So, forget everything about a video conference. Telepresence is the ability to gather people around a virtual table without having them on a physical the same place, which means uh, having exactly a meeting like we have right now. You could be in London, I could be in Paris, and we'll have exactly the same interaction. So by doing it, you basically save the travels. I used to go once a week in London and once a month uh, in San Francisco for meetings, which I would obviously spend money as well as uh, in terms of carbon footprint not being a very uh, green person. And now we do everything through telepresence. And the impact is quite great. It's no, number one, uh, we reduce cost as well. We gain in efficiency of running meetings. What's been the impact on your cost exactly? Some say 50 percent, a 50 percent reduction? On, on the telepresence, it is on an annual basis, it's $500 million that we have reduced by oh. using telepresence. Now, despite cost cuts, your net income fell in the first quarter of this year by about uh, 24 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, sales were down 17 percent. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to reach an annual growth of between 12 and, and 17 percent, as apparently was your target in the previous years? Well, it is a mid to long term target. Uh, as we, we said, I mean, this third quarter, our top line went down uh, by 17 percent. But we managed to generate, you know, a cash from $1.3 billion, bringing the overall cash of the company at $33 billion. So we feel that is a kind of solid a quarter or third quarter. Now, uh, you explained to us uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, telepresence activity. Now, how is it affecting your company's strategy? It seems that over the years, Cisco has evolved from a strictly B2B business to business company to a B2C business to a customer company. What exactly did you do and why did you do that? Well, telepresence is uh, uh, an example of our strategy, which is to focus uh, those new technologies on the usage that those new technologies can bring. Uh, another example will be to use telepresence in the health environment. This is what we call the health presence. And as we speak, we are right now piloting here in France the ability to do diagnostic, medical diagnostic, without having the people physically in the same room. And in, in, from, in two to three years, you will see those telepresence as well in your home. So this is the way that we feel uh, uh, new technologies can bring a lot of value uh, to the people. More generally, why did you decide to uh, uh, achieve this turnaround in your company's strategy by addressing directly the final customers instead of businesses? Well, we have had uh, for a long time uh, a strategy to go on B2B and B2C. Okay. With the acquisition of Linksys uh, six years ago, clearly it was an intention to go into the consumer. So we have not changed and we are right now going more into the direction. We are expanding our B2C activities. So it's not something new, it's something we're going to expand. But I would say the interesting thing is we have not changed our strategy. The core technology remains the same. Cisco is a technology company with putting all emphasis on how to optimize the network for either enterprise or end customer. Well, specifically, 
what other uh, applications did you decide to develop to allow Cisco to become a dominant player in the uh, networked house of the future? Well, I, I may dispute the dominant player uh, things. I think we, we're there as a leader because we have you know, been investing in new technologies for a very long time. An example is something we have announced this week is to move into the smart grid, which basically allows to match uh, demand and production of energy to be sure that on, on one hand we will provide to a consumer the ability to reduce the invoice of energy but as well for the energy provider to produce at the right level. This is one example of, of, of something we're going to do. Now this decision to get closer to the final customer has uh, actually created some tensions with your usual clients, the big IT companies, IBM is getting closer to your competitor, Juniper Networks, for instance, and HP has developed its own uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, service uh, uh, to uh, uh, compete with uh, your company. How do you think these relations will evolve in the future? Are you concerned by this, uh, for instance, HP ProCurve uh, competition in Ethernet switching in the future? Well, our focus is clearly to look after market transition. When we move from the pure network technology into the telephony, what did we do? We just said we can apply the same way we manage the network to a telephony network. And we created a telephony network and the IP telephony is a reality today. Uh, what we do now, when I, I mentioned smart grid, this is exactly the same approach. So we are far more interested in looking after new opportunities, bringing new value and sh making clear to officials, governments, and companies that new technology can be an area of growth, sustainable growth. This is, I guess, what is very important. But aren't you concerned, concerned that the uh, business share you gain with final customers will actually cost you some market share with, your, uh, uh, with businesses you've been used to work with? No, we have not changed the relationship we have. I mean, we continue dealing uh, with very large enterprises, I mean the cat count in France or many others, are the same way as we're going, uh, we're providing solutions through our distributors uh, to, to, to end customers, to consumers. So we have not changed there. What clearly we said, and that basic, potentially why you're asking me the question is, we are more visible. We are more visible because we are focusing on the usage of this technology. Now, you ended the uh, first quarter flush with cash with $33 billion. Uh, does it mean you're ready for more acquisitions? What are you going to do with this money? Some say you might uh, also uh, take a significant share in the smartphone business. Some say you might even be interested in buying companies such as Palm or Motorola. What's your future in this field? Well, first of all, acquisition has been in our strategy for the start of the company. We have acquired so far 140 uh, companies, and the acquisition, uh, all those acquisitions, uh, were to complement our innovation strategy we have, which is in order to continue to grow, we have to innovate. So clearly having $33 billion in our balance sheet put us in a situation where we're clearly looking at acquisition in the same way we've been looking at acquisition uh, for the last 25 years. And we'll increase your presence in emerging markets as well. Apparently you're taking a, a big jump to uh, India, a big foray, about 20% of your executives will relocate in India in the next few years. What exactly do you expect uh, to, uh, uh, in terms of reaping the benefits from the fast uh, growing development of these economies? Well, it is a decision that we have taken a couple of years ago, where we felt that in those countries, we call emerging countries, uh, new technologies could provide and help uh, uh, developing those countries uh, faster. In order to, to do this, we could have done everything from you know, California, but we decided to actually having a second you know, uh, site, uh, official site, a headquarters in Bangalore to ensure that all solutions that we will develop will match the local you know, uh, customer uh, request. And it's true that we have some of our board of directors and, and peop, uh, senior, senior executive being in Bangalore using telepresence and managing the company in the same way as if they would all be uh, in, in California. Are you concerned by the recent decision by European competition regulators to slap Intel with a uh, $1.5 billion fine for abusing its uh, dominant market position? Some say Cisco too has become too dominant in its, in its market and obviously regulators are interested in your case too. Well, I think internet is going through a different step in terms of evolution and right now the fact that in France we have what we call the ADOP, la haute autorité, uh, who's going to look after internet is for me a very good sign. 
it shows that internet is perceived and new technology are perceived as um, a potential way to bring growth and to be uh, considered very seriously. So I think we're going to see this more happening in the other countries. Uh, and but at the end of the day, you know, I think what I believe is that all our officials and government should really see internet as being a vector to grow, uh, the, I mean, grow the economy as well as an answer to the crisis. Well, thank you very much, Laurent Blanchard, for being our guest this week. And thank you for watching. That's it for this week's business interview. Thanks for watching. Do stay with us on France 24.